Hello, I'm Mark, and this is In the Round, the On Amateur Bus tutorial series, part 1 of 15, the introduction. In this video, I'll be covering the methodology, goals, and structure of the series, as well as making some general comments on figure sculpting and the study of anatomy for artists. This tutorial series is intended to serve both as a structured guide to traditional on-armature bust sculpting in water-based clay, and as a general introduction to basic sculptural techniques and principles common to all plastic sculptural materials. I want to emphasize that, although I'll be taking you through a simple progression of specific steps to build up, lay out, and sculpt a bust, there are many ways to achieve the same outcomes. The three methods for sculpting plastic materials are addition, subtraction, and compression. The primary way that individual sculptural techniques differ is in how they balance these methods. Some sculptors focus more on subtraction, others on addition, many hardly use compression at all. Additionally, there are different ways to block out the primary anatomical forms. There are different ways to build the features. Armatures differ, tools differ, materials differ, some sculptors work dry, others wet, and so on. In the end, what's important are the underlying principles, and that the approach is analytical and systematic rather than intuitive and haphazard. In these videos, we will focus on foundational basics of clear, straightforward methods of laying out and articulating anatomical form. This will provide a basic understanding of how a bust works, and a basis from which to pursue more advanced and more idiosyncratic techniques and stylizations. On the subject of stylization, Although some hyper-realist sculptors, such as Dwayne Hansen and Ron Muir, attempt to represent the figure with perfect fidelity, the overwhelming majority of figure sculpting involves a degree of abstraction of one kind or another. For instance, the simplification of complex structures for formal clarity, or the exaggeration of features for expressive emphasis. In particular, monochrome sculpture must compensate for pigment variations in the skin. Take the skin around the eyes, which tends to be darker than that of the rest of the face. If you think of sculpting as a kind of in-the-round value drawing, rendered in caught light and cast shadow, and it can be very useful to think of it as such, then the pigmentation around the eye translates into a more deeply set, and therefore more darkly shadowed, socket than in reality. This is why life casts and digital scans of people typically look less like them than a well-rendered sculpture. These videos will provide a basis from which to begin either to develop your own formal and expressive style, or to move more towards the representational fidelity of hyperrealism. Regardless of the stylistic direction you eventually take, figure sculpting will necessarily entail the study of anatomy. Anatomy is a hugely complicated subject full of long and difficult to pronounce words. Fortunately, as artists, we can safely ignore the large majority of it. What will concern us are those structures that impinge on the surface of the body and which affect its action. Although no small subject itself, this is nonetheless rather more manageable. It is crucial that we have at least a basic understanding of these structures, because the simple fact is that things don't look like we think they do, especially people. As Matisse wrote in his 1954 essay, Looking at Life with the Eyes of a Child, everything that we see in our daily life is more or less distorted by acquired habits, and this is perhaps more evident in an age like ours, when cinema posters and magazines present us every day with a flood of ready-made images which are to the eye what prejudices are to the mind. That is, our brains are stocked with conventional images that serve as easy stand-ins for the complexity and specificity of observed reality. And almost everyone favors the mental image over the reality, even when the reality is placed directly in front of them. There are a number of common mistakes that novice sculptors tend to make when attempting a bust. These include flattening of the face, a head that's too round, insufficient volume in the occipital, eyes that are too high, outlining of the features, flattened mouth, and flat ears stuck to the sides of the head. It's like a bad drawing of a face rendered in thin tubes of clay on a sphere, an iconic representation of a face made up in turn of iconic representations of the parts of a face that is, at its root, based on this. It takes effort and practice to see beyond our expectations, and when it comes to sculpting people, the study of anatomy is the largest part of that effort. 
This is because it allows us to understand the often strange and unexpected structures that together constitute what we tend to internalize holistically as a face or a body. And ultimately, it's that structural understanding that matters, not all those long Latin words. Learning them is really just a means to that end. Once we understand the structures common to all people, we can begin to make sense of the infinite variation of form we see in actual people. When studying the figure, it's important to really look at people, lots of people, to become something of a creepy subway starer, though try not to make anyone too uncomfortable, and to think analytically about what you're seeing, to connect observation with anatomical knowledge. For instance, the tip of the nose comprises two cartilaginous lobes called the greater aller cartilages. Though present in everyone, these structures are, in most people, sufficiently subtle as to go entirely unnoticed, unless, that is, you know to look for them. And now you do. In addition to basic anatomy, it's useful to familiarize yourself with common proportional systems and equivalencies. These systems are in no way absolute, or even true in any real sense. Note, for instance, the differences between Dürer's and da Vinci's proportional systems. Rather, they are generalizations that serve as a baseline against which to measure the proportional idiosyncrasies of actual people, and to thereby better see what's in front of us. They can also be useful for beginners, because following them will prevent any dramatic errors in proportion. So, anatomy to help you recognize and disambiguate the unfamiliar when you find it, and proportional systems to provide a baseline against which to measure observations. I want to emphasize that it is necessary to sculpt from observation. Don't try to just make it up. Whenever possible, sculpt directly from life, the thing itself in front of you. Failing that, sculpt from a 3D representation of the thing, such as a cast or 3D printed scan. If that also is impossible, sculpt from images. Images are, of course, the easiest references to acquire, and are therefore the most commonly used. But they can be misleading. Lens distortions, slight shifts in camera angle, and inconsistent lighting can all give false information about the form. When practicing, however, images can make fine references. For instance, many beginners start with compilation busts, combining measurements from one person, eyes from another, the nose of a third, etc. This is the method I'd recommend for this series. I will now go over the structure of the series. In the description, you'll find links to each part, as well as to a number of ancillary videos demonstrating basic techniques in clay. Part 1, the introduction, you're watching now. In part 2, I'll be covering materials, tools, and recommended resources. In part 3, I'll be showing you how to make an armature. In part 4, we'll load some clay onto the armature and form the blank head using the primary measurements. In part 5, we'll block in the features. In part 6, we'll build up the neck, shoulders, and chest. In part 7, we'll focus on the nose. Part 8, the mouth. Part 9, the ears. And part 10, the eyes. Part 11 will cover definition, refinement, and posing the bust. Part 12 will cover short hair and eyebrows. Part 13 will cover long hair. In part 14, we will remove, hollow, and reassemble the bust. And in part 15, we will finish and detail it.